Scott Narver, Tony Khan is in the giving spirit. Jake Lloyd Bacon, what's he giving away? He's giving away old wrestlers. He gifted Ric Flair to the Icon Sting. Whoa, maybe Tony Khan will gift a wrestler to our show, Pro Wrestling Powskis. Entirely in the realm of possibility. Uh, which old school wrestler would you like him to gift us? The biggest, Andre the Giant. Oh, he he's dead. Oh, well, still big because it's in their name, Big Boss Man. Oh, Scott, he's dead too. Big John Stud? Oh my God, this is just as bad as that Saudi prince. Ric Flair in AEW and more this week on Pro Wrestling Powskis. Scott Narver. Hey, Jake Lloyd Bacon. Uh, and hello to everybody listening out there in the Palski universe um, on the pod feed. We appreciate you joining us and putting us in your ear holes. And of course, a very special hello to those joining us live for the uh, exclusive patron only live stream. Uh, that is right. If you would like to join us for these episodes live as they happen, so you can uh, uh, tell us. How very dumb we are in real time. Well, you got to become a patron over at patreon.com slash pro wrestling Palskis or PW Palskis. It's one of those. You'll find it. It's fine. We're professionals. Hey, we got to ex- sling mud without slinging some cash first. Oh, I the like rule. That. Um, And of course, we must acknowledge AJ0314. There we go. It's on this side of me. Um, Current PWP champ. AJ0314, a.k.a. Binary, PWP champ for the month of October, the official spooky champ. That title up for grabs later on in today's show. We are going to name the and November. so you know. is AJ's Halloween candy, <gasps> I believe. You get all his Halloween candy? Yeah, whatever's left over because it's part of the defense, right? Oh, I, 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 I'll listen. If there, if there is any leftover, we don't know. I have. I don't know. I have had way too much sugar in the past like 72 hours it's been it's been too much i've made myself ill you mean more ill because you're generally ill yes i've made thank you i appreciate you correcting that i have made myself more ill than usual yeah you're in a regular state of ill yes yes but now but and not like not like the night not like beastie boys not like Yo, shit! That guy, yo, that guy's ill. No, 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 not in a good way. No, in a generally just not well. Uh, the definition of the word. But uh, listen, I have had a lot of candy, and um, a lot of mistakes were made. And you know what? Whether I regret them, only time will tell. Uh, are you just in like a sugar high? No, no. Have you avoided all the Halloween candies? No, I've had very little. Oh, okay, but no, but not a lot. I feel like. Uh, that's uh, surprising to hear from you. Things have been uh, chaotic and different and not destructive. Like it's not, I'm not saying like, woe is me right now, but there's not been a lot of time to just go, hey, there's a bowl of candy. I'm going to sure. eat some of that because that would do or feel great in any way. It's just like, I don't care. But that it's interesting because that's surprising to me because I feel like I like I sh- will stress eat it. If I see it, I'm like, oh, fuck everything that's happening right now. I just want to shove all this sugar in my mouth because I have a problem. Well, that for right now is just not checking any boxes for me. Right. Okay. If there is a big tub of popcorn or something, oh, maybe okay. something more savory. Oh, all right. You go then salty. I would go that route, but just a bunch of candy. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. whatever. So you go salty when you're stressed. Just That's get, just what I feel right now. Okay, I respect it. I respect it. Um, uh, Scott Narver, we have uh, we have a lot of news to talk about. Um, uh, and uh, today, as of recording, just a, a short while ago, uh, WWE Crown Jewel ended. I forgot it was today. Oh um, no, it ended, but it's such a lucrative deal. Listen, oh no, 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 it it will never end. In fact. I one of the news stories I did not write because I figured, yeah, we know at this point was people were saying that it was like 
record profits for WWE, this specific event. Like they made billions and billions of dollars today. So good for them. They should be able to well, hire back Dolph Ziggler. Because now they don't allow the ladies of uh, Saudi Arabia to show up to the show in their garb that they wear from home or any traditional, I don't know the culture, but like sure. any sort of like religiously tied garments or anything okay. like that. Now it's head to toe, like Bailey shirts yes. all sewn together. You got to buy merch. You got to buy merch. And it. It, they, they don't make what they want. Right. Like they don't make those particular garbs. So they'll just stitch a bunch of stuff together and they'll be like, ah, that's actually nine shirts tied together and three bananas. So that's um, $483. I, I think you were very, very, very kind with the cost on nine shirts just then. Well, there's also the bandanas. Oh, that's fair. Okay. Um. Anyways, let's get into some shit. What do you say? Uh, Intercontinental champion Gunther is forbidden from leaving and competing outside of the USA for the next six months due to what he said were, quote, strict residency regulations. Uh, Did he pull Hardy? I don't think he pulled a hardy. I think he pulled a uh, relocation knee. Uh, he currently lives in Orlando, Florida, having moved full time from Europe in early 2022. And uh, okay. I, I tried and searched for like what the limitation is and what, quote, residence regulations means exactly. But I could not find anything helpful. Uh, regardless, he cannot compete in WWE's Elimination Chamber in Australia next year in February because it falls within his thing. He can't travel, which is also why he wasn't a part of Crown Jewel today. But I'm, I'm guessing it has to do with the fact that since he recently moved, he's probably in some sort of, I don't want to call it a probationary period, but that kind of thing where you there's certain things that you can and cannot do in attempts to potentially get your residency or where you can work. Probably It seems like it's more about where you can work than where you can travel. I'm sure he can travel to these places. He just can't wrestle there. Well, then why would he want to travel there for sightseeing? Yeah, he's an intercontinental champion. He's got it's, a fight. There is there is an irony to the intercontinental champion not being able to travel intercontinentally. He can't continent right now. Right now, he's the continental champion at yeah. best. He's gonna fall under that thirty day rule, you know, and they're gonna be like, hey. You got to be more continenty. And he's like, I can't continenty. Continenty? I didn't know yeah. that was. I and he's being really... real continenty. So now you sound it's... like, it sounds like something Jim Cornette would say. Like no. On commentary. No. Come on. Come on. Um, I don't if, know. It is... if, if he did, we beat him to it. In all seriousness, it is kind of a bummer because they've done really well with booking him and protecting him. He's got this incredible streak. He's got this incredible championship run right now. And it's a pretty major event, Elimination Chamber, uh, the last one before Mania. Um, this was a major event today, you know, even though we still pretend like it's WWE Elseworlds, it has not, it is officially not Elseworlds now. Saudi is just part of the show. Um, but yeah, bummer, bummer for Gunther. Well, hopefully in a way it makes it all that much more exciting when he does wrestle because it's a little limited now, right? Right. He's not wrestling all the time at some of these big shows. Like for an elimination chamber, for example, as cool as it'd be for Australian fans to see him live in person. We know that there's already too many titles as it is, but right. it's not something where now it's the intercontinental title elimination chamber. Right. And maybe it doesn't mean as much or something like that. It's so it's like, well, he's removed from anything being watered down. Yes. Potentially. That, that's fair. Um, it might just make him more special if he can't appear in some of these things, but also the international shows are like that that's their big deal now. And I bet you those come with um decent paychecks too. And I feel like that's kind of a bummer. And swag bags. <gasps> oh, you think he gets little swag bags? He probably could have got a free koala. And I'm sure the lady would have been all about it that he was, you know, he's recently married and she's like, you're not getting a koala. He's like, no, sorry. And then, you know how we see him? Like he puts his hands behind his back, like all, Super yeah, tough, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, real proper cool. and respectful. He does, it, but when he's you know has to report something sad to the wife, like then he puts him be back behind his back, real slow, and then lowers his head and like kicks his foot a little bit. So, <laughs> sorry, not getting a koala. Um, well, you know who will get a koala, and that is if they give away koalas for constantly being in the hospital. Brian Danielson. 
All right. He's going to get his koala hospital punch card. Uh, suffered a broken orbital bone uh, in a match with Andrade on a recent collision. In a recent collision is what they should say. Uh, do you get it? We have fun. Mm, um, I do. He reportedly told uh, 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 several outlets that it happened on the opening collar and elbow tie-up when he caught an errant forearm or an elbow or something to the face. Um, Why didn't he tell this outlet? Uh, because he does, you know, I don't think he has the hotline number. 747-666-5606. Everybody X Brian Danielson. Let him know. X him. You have to X him good. X him to death. Um, Tony Schiavone confirmed during AEW Control Center that Danielson has undergone surgery for the Broken orbital bone and is, quote, out until later in the year. I think he just. Well, there's not much of that left. He just needs to. That's fair. And, you know, honestly, he just needs to get one of those sweet Undertaker masks. Yeah. When he did his orbital bone. And then didn't. But now he could have a goat one. Didn't Naomi also wear like a bejeweled eye patch at one point? That I don't recall. Yeah, because uh, 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 Asa, As- Asana, what was her name? Oksana broke her orbital bone like kneeing her in the fucking eye like a lunatic um well she wanted to win well you know what that is fair that is a fair point i mean you do you would do attempt to uh to defeat a person by injuring them so one could argue she did the best job uh yeah and this is andrade doing this hmm mm. interesting Andrade. i don't speak spanish but it sounds like there's andrade uh, there's i in there somewhere maybe it's about Elbowing in the eye, Andrade. Well, and uh, Dad Day showed up. So, you know, trying to win oh, I see. Daddy's love. Oh, okay, I was like, what? Yeah, 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 exactly. Look what I, I hurt the, I hurt the little loud man. Um, Although you, you said, the loud you man? said he wouldn't, you said he'd have a goat, but I feel like, I mean, he's long past the goat now. He would have like, a, he'd have a little dragon because he's the American dragon, right? Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Should, oh, oh, a scaled. Yeah. Fucking man that looks like a dinosaur. <gasps> oh my god! And then just you, think I, that he could have some sort of like a boy following right. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a little um, not a dragon boy, but a like prehistoric boy. Yeah, like a little like a fantasy boy. Like a little yeah, yeah. Like a he's not you know he's a prehistoric boy. Well, no, because he's he's I from Sherwood Forest. Kid. He's not. He's a forest boy. Oh, a nature boy. Oh, okay. Well, we've come full circle. Um, hey, despite this ridiculous injury, Danielson has been booked for a huge match that will knock an item off of in Australia off of his pro wrestling pro wrestling bucket list. Yes, versus Walter in, in a cage in Australia. Um, in a wrestling match. Um, well, because Re- refereed you know by Tamina. He said because he said something and then they threw me. You know what I said. Anyways, yeah, New Japan Pro Wrestling announced that uh, Brian Danielson will wrestle Okada. At Wrestle Kingdom, which a lot of people are very excited about. Ooh, that'll be cool because that'll be their booking and not a bunch of dumb shit that AEW but will do. But didn't he or, get hurt? Like, they'll pace it well. Didn't he get hurt last you know? time in that match? I, 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 f- I feel like I remember that was the last time Daniel Bryan Danielson got hurt was against Okada. That could be. And I think that, I remember seeing that at um at the movie theater with Warzeka. And the feed went out and people got pissed because it was the it was the countdown song that Danielson brought right. back. And people were like tried to find it on their phone and playing it like, ah, the, the, he's coming out to this song, everybody. But the the scale, the feeling, the it's neat that AEW does this stuff, but for it to be at Wrestle Kingdom instead, right. I think is way cooler. This is this is gonna make all the fans right. happy. This is huge for Wrestle Kingdom. Everything about it, like that's that's rad. I mean, I know that you know everybody has their own opinions on the way things are, but I feel like Wrestle Kingdom is a bigger deal than AEW's biggest pay per view. Yeah, and it has the lineage, yeah. and it's it's. I mean, it's been Okada's show for a number right. of years now, and uh, those fans will give it a totally different right. feel. Right. It's that's. That's that's super cool. That gets me excited for Wrestle Kingdom yeah. now. Um, well, let's hope that uh, he's completely healed and he isn't wearing that dragon eye patch that is going to make him hurt himself more. Speaking of getting hurt for no reason, uh, WWE confirms the return of War Games for the second straight year at the Survivor Series PLE. 
Uh, during Crown Jewel, WWE ran a video package for their next major offering on November 25th and confirmed War Games would be involved on the card uh, once again with the same accompanying soundtrack of Black Sabbath's War Pigs included. So you, you, this is just what Survivor Series is now. Survivor, Survivor Series is now Survivor Series colon War Games for the foreseeable future. Colon's right. <laughs> Primo? Epico? Which one? Because it's a shit show. Why? Why do this? It, it, <laughs> why? It, I will say, like, it felt it didn't feel odd last year because the bloodline story felt like it got to a point where war games fit that story. And so it just so happened to be we're doing war games at this thing. and It's this team because it made sense. But this just seems like, well, now we're going to take whatever stories we have and cram it into this cage. Because it's going to happen every time, uh, this time of year. It, it's it's the Hell in the Cell problem that we talked about. Whereas like it used to be that things organically led to Hell in the Cell, instead of it just being well, we have to find what match is going to be in the cell now, because it's happening. Regardless. Yeah, but but this is dumber now because this is now Survivor right. Series. Hey, that's a show with match stipulations. Right. Uh, war games. Wait, but you already have Survivor Series. I unless we're going to do Royal Rumble cage match, right? Where it's going to be really hard to throw them over the top rope because there's a fucking cage. <laughs> you have to throw them over the top of the cage? I mean, listen. I know a million idea when I hear one. Gonna get you on the phone with that Saudi prince right now. We can make that shit happen. Like, do a war game. Sure. Have that be another yeah. show. Yeah. It, it, but this is Survivor Series. We don't need it at Survivor Series. It does. We're yeah, good. It does seem like they have just abandoned like they don't see an interest in the survivor series match anymore the classic survivor series match and so because of that they are just taking another thing and putting it in its spot because they're not going to give up the survivor series name as one of what you know we refer to as the big four as if that is really a thing anymore yeah and it's it, it's well then don't i don't i don't know it doesn't make sense to me to have to acknowledge history, to have it be a part of that show when it's just, just remove Survivor Series right. for a while. Just exactly. get rid of it. And then it'll be exciting and just call when it you War come Games. back. People will be thrilled. Yeah. yeah. One or the other. Don't, don't yeah. do both. Yeah. Because you have plenty of shows throughout the year that you'll need plenty yeah. of things. It's, l- it's like the old, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm going to butcher it, of course, but it's like the quote about Christian rock music by uh, Hank Hill. It's like by putting the two things together, you're not making Christianity cool. You're just making rock shittier. You're yeah, ruining both um, things by merging them. And I, I know I, I'm of, of a certain ilk where there's um, like it, when I went grocery shopping with my mom the other day, she's been on the hunt for pimento cheese for a while. Okay. And uh, we went to a because uh, not everybody carries it or you find in a grocery store, there could be like three or four places for different types of cheese and categories right. of it. But we went into a, a Rouse that has like a fancy cheese stand to it. And I said, we should ask the guy. And she goes, he won't know. And I go, that's all he's right. doing. Like he's at he's the, the cheese, cheese counter. That's his. And uh, he, he points right over and he says, we have a variety of them. And she's like, really? And not expecting we have original pimento cheese. Like, Great. That's what I want. What else is there? Jalapeno. And she's going, no. Thai chili. No. She doesn't want yeah. the variety of flavors. She just wants pimento yeah. cheese. So I feel like that's, you know, when you start adding all these things, I, I, I am sometimes that way where I go, look, I, I sometimes like the combination of some of the innovative stuff you're going to do, but I don't want that from everywhere. The fast food trend now is getting so crazy with we're adding right. ch- chili peppers and right. d- the ghost peppers, and we're adding all these things to it. And uh, well, what was it? It was a cheeseburger, but not right. anymore. Yeah. Now it's got a black bun. It's a limited time. And it's it's filled with the half mushroom, half jalapeno goat cheese. Yeah, of course. Um, Yeah, so it, sometimes like, no, nah, just, just rock that cheeseburger. Yeah. At the end it's of fine. the day, what we're trying to say is uh, War Games being part of Survivor Series is very cheesy. You know, also there's no, there's like last year when they announced it again, it felt like, oh, we're announcing this match because of the bloodline story. 
the story announced the match. We've now announced the match and they haven't said who's going to be a part of it, which it, so like, you know, the, uh, there's a storyline happening right now with the judgment day and a bunch of baby faces, Cody Rhodes, Sami Zayn, Jay Uso. Like, so I can only assume that like right now, uh, judgment day is the like four person faction, but are they going to put Rhea in there with the men? Are they going to do a, are they going to have to find a new judgment day male member to throw in, to have a four on four? Um, you know, like, I don't know. It seems like whatever they're, they could be friends with somebody. Yeah. Whatever they do, they're going to cram it in and it's going to be, it's it's gonna not I, feel organic and by the way i i love these i like the war games matches i have not seen a match so far that i've been like oh that was awful some of them i go i didn't need to see it it wasn't great but yeah you saw some that you thought were awful i have um i sure have because i've seen the original sure. war games so i've seen uh well also i there's cool uh i'm trying to avoid bragging rights there's cool honor <laughs> in being the surviving team, the sole survivor, the in the survivor series, having your team of people, whether it's, you know, you're the captain, you have to make a team right. of people, but having the stakes of like, we are going to win. We're, we're going to show that we are better right. than you, that my group is better, whether it's the bloodline or whoever else that all works for survivor series too. And then if it's got to be ramped up, it's like, all right, we didn't have a decisive winner or that's still going on. War games will decide this. War games will put right. an end to it. Right, right, right. Because when you have the multi man, it's like, yeah, no, Hell in the Cell is not going to work so right. well, or whatever else. A uh, last man, last men standing. No, yeah. it's too many men. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I, again, I get it from a business standpoint, but I just don't think it's smart. I think that they, that they are going to regret it. I get like right now where they go like, well, we have that thing. Let's shove the sh thing that people actually like seeing. Plus, we'll have Regal come out and say the words. Everybody loves that. <laughs> Do it in December. Tape it beforehand. Let people watch it around Christmas. Um, Listen, you know how much I hate sports. Um, That's why I, I watch pro wrestling. But uh, I thought this was interesting. The NBA... Announced on Tuesday that Philadelphia 76ers superstar, trademark, uh, Joel Embiid, I think that's how you say his name, Embiid. I've seen the jersey, but I've never heard anybody ever say it. Embiid, E-M-B-I-I-D. He was fined $3,500 for, quote, repeatedly making an obscene gesture during a game against the Portland Trailblazers. Take a guess what that gesture was, Scott Narver. Suck it. Yep. He was doing the DX chops. After he like he made a fucking like easy layup, and by the way, it was like there was like two minutes left of the game. They were just they were dominating. They were crushing. They were already winning by quite a lot. He like you know gets a nice pass, takes a little easy layup. I don't know, maybe he dunked it. I can't remember. It wasn't spectacular from what I remember. But in any case, he stops and he just gives a little. And they weren't even good. They were kind of the way that like people who like, the li the little well, no, ones of, like, it's not, it's, oh, they were big. But second. I like it when the arms cross. You know, I like it when you cross your arms at the wrists. And there was none of that. It was just that like. I'm gesturing in my pelvic region. Oh, I, I think that's the way to go. Yeah. I think it's the, mm, cause that's, Present, that's a clear, presentational. When you start crossing. It's like, Oh, let's get clever with it. Like, no, 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 no. Now Listen, that then, then do they have to crisscross their legs while they, they do it? While they suck. This is it? the best uh, definition of you and I as people is that I like to get a little fancy with it or whatever you just said. I like to get a little, you're a yeah, yeah. I want to. I want the little wrists crossed, and you're just like, "Hey, meat and potatoes, right there." Literally, I'm in the back alley, and I'm like, Literally. "Let's go." Thirty-five thousand dollars. Wait, you said thirty-five hundred. Read that wrong. Sorry, then. If I said thirty-five hundred, thirty-five thousand. I was like, "Who gives a 35, shit?" Thirty-five thousand for doing thirty-five thousand to suck it. <laughs> no, do you have it sucked? Apparently. So Billy Gunn. Recently, I think it was on uh, a dynamite was in a multi-man match uh, with uh, against his sons <gasps> and told them to suck it. That's inappropriate. See, Ray didn't do that with his son. He just spanked him on television for cereal. Oh, he didn't. And he punched him in the face and he and he kicked both of his feet into that his too, face. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe had he told him to suck it, then it would have calmed down. You sent him to prison? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, 
where there was sucking it going on. I'm curious. I know that maybe if listeners who are are, are bigger sports fans uh, than I know, but I recall hearing that like the NBA has gotten very, very strict lately on a lot of things that people are complaining that uh, the whistle's constantly being called because everything is wrong and everything is a foul and everything is drawing a whistle. Like I've heard that. I'm curious if this is Who do you hear that from? I, I, I recall seeing it on the internet. I've watched a video or two about how people aren't calling double dribbling, but they are calling things that aren't fouls, fouls constantly. Like there's this whole thing out there where modern day basketball players are constantly putting their hand below the ball when they dribble and that they're not getting called but simultaneously, um, they're giving them shit like this, where they're getting constantly in trouble for doing things that are not at all problems. I call foul on your osmosis or taking this I, in do, of like, do, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm just right. aware of okay. like do, Are you going to make me culture? go try to find the Twitter account of a guy who literally just... You prefaced all this with like, I don't like sports. I, know, I don't watch sports. I've, sports can go straight to hell and they can suck it. But I didn't have it. my source. And that was why I was just trying to be vague about it. And now you've called me out for not citing my source. Um, there's a guy on Twitter uh, who literally his entire Twitter account is just posting video of like every single carry that happens in every NBA game. And it's endless. Why do you follow this person? I don't. They just pop up a lot. It's it's X <laughs> because X is broken and it just shows you shit you weren't interested in the first place. But I guess it was right in this instance because I watched all of them and I went, yeah, you know what? That's actually fine. <laughs> um, it got you. So you say yeah, X is know. broken. X X knows you too good. Yeah, I don't know. I got so your story. You get your story straight. Uh, I'll I'll mess. find the guy and I'll post in the Discord. Join the Discord. Um, I don't want to kill more time looking for that. Anyways, I mean, what would be an acceptable wrestling taunt to do at a sports game that wouldn't, that won't draw a fine? Like, would you get a fine for the Randy Orton? Is That's it? Not it's, taunt, it's not though. obscene because it's about being obscene. Yeah, but you still want to yeah. taunt somebody like doing something. That's that's just a moment you for that, yourself it, and to the you crowd. That's not taunting someone. If you did it in someone's face, it would be. If I went right up to you and just went, then you would be like, all right, that's, that's, don't do that at me. It's too wide. It'd be like, I don't know what you you're just doing. Give me a, I, this is a You would block. give me a hug. Like, I thought you wanted a hug. I don't know. I'm sorry. A, t- a good taunt. Oh, a good old Cena. You can't, Cena, yeah, you can't that's see gotta me. Be, people have had to have been doing that in sports for years now. That, I think that's, that's solid. About, that's fine. What about a little take her throat rip? <laughs> little thumb how sure. sharp is undertaker's th- thumbnail that he can really just gut you like that it's really sharp because he one time the he Sarah, removed the sarah tattoo yeah. that's and how one he swipe. got rid of it. a lot of people don't know that yeah saved him 35 um, bucks i think which could be a fine in the I nba i think that uh if i was in the nba and i um had made a nice dunk that i would do the bill of twins little hip twirl and then people would be like what the fuck was that and then nobody would charge me anything but everyone knows that your motto is you can look and you, can, and touch, you right. can touch. Um and listen, you better have your song better have stars in the words somewhere if you're a lady wrestler in WWE. Um hey, uh, I wrote this down and then had to change it because of things that happened just a couple hours ago. Ahead of her trios match on October 9th, Kyrie Sane issued an address to stardom fans stating that it could be her final time performing in front of them. Um, and, uh, she was added back into the WWE rosters website two days ago. Today, she returns to WWE programming at crown jewel, aiding EO sky and beating Bianca Belair for the WWE women's championship. So Kyrie Sane is back in the company. I was, I, I didn't think we would ever see her in the company again. I knew that triple H liked her a lot, but I just thought that, uh, her time there was not used in a way that I don't know that they felt like uh, she made an impact. Whoa. I'm sorry. She much? made it. She made it. She made a TNA. Yeah. I thought it was yeah. fine. Like, I don't, I feel like they take everybody yeah, back. Maybe, maybe there's just not, they're fine with yeah, everybody def- for the most part. There's like four people that they're like, no, she's definitely, she, you know, listen, she no, listened thanks. to our episode last week 
uh, the Halloween episode about dark e- evil As versions you do. because she she came back and she was a little bit more goth than she used to be hanging out with EO Sky. Um, it was it Is was a little bit of um, kind of a wonky moment where commentary like didn't like they didn't say quick enough like oh my god it's it's you know uh, the Kyrie saying it's Kyrie saying instead it was that like what who is this what is happening and that confusion didn't lend itself to us being excited about who it was instead it was like oh it's just Kyrie saying yeah that's hard I feel like you gotta for her you do the video package that she's coming back maybe yeah it will yeah. N- not just the oh my god could it be it is, and I think there's so many fans, because her last run, if I'm not mistaken, was during Thunderdome times, was it not? I believe so, yeah. So. Excuse me. Um, What do you do, chewing soup? What is that? No, I, I, I was drinking water, and, I, and ice accidentally made its way into my mouth, and I wanted to spit it out, and um, I wanted to apologize to the viewers who had watched that. You're drinking stew, and that was a big old lump of potato. That's yeah, going listen, sometimes the potato doesn't cook enough when it's in the, not in the stew line. It's a little chunky. You don't want that. Um, speaking of chunky potatoes, Ronda Rousey surprised fans. I don't know why. I apologize to everybody. Ronda Rousey surprised fans at Lucha Vavoom on October 26, where she teamed with AEW star and a friend of hers, Marina Shafir, to defeat Ty Valkyrie and Brian Kendrick. Uh, now her first official match since leaving WWE was announced on X. Oh boy. Uh, on Thursday, the former UFC and WWE star will be teaming up with Shafir once again to face uh, Ring of Honor women's champion Athena and her protege Billy Starks in the main event of Wrestling Revolver's Unreal on November 16th in LA. All ticket sales from the event will be donated to the Lahaina Wildfire Relief a charity to help those who have Lahaina. been affected by the recent wildfires in Hawaii. Lahaina. Did you, you corrected me? Thank you. Lahaina. What did mm-hmm. I say? Lahaina. Lahaina? Yeah. You, Lahaina? It's t- typically with uh, Hawaiian words, you'd say all the, the letters as is. Gotcha. You're good. Uh, well, Unless yeah. You're at first... And you, you say you manga. <laughs> like, there's no N. Listen, he just like he reads manga and he thought that it's the same thing. Uh, at first, when I saw this announced, I was like, oh, wow, Rhonda is taking a, a, you know, a fairly low paying probably job for this company. That's not super huge. But then I saw that it is for this charity. And I know that she's isn't she married to a Hawaiian guy and she lives for most of her life in Hawaii. And I go, oh, OK, this this makes sense if it's for something she's cares about and it'll draw some money she'll go have a match it's a tag match so who knows what she'll have to really do well it's probably more fun it's probably low stakes and been yeah you know sold in that way where it's hey come out come out hang out with your friends also yeah this i'm trying to think how much time did she really even get to spend with marina and that that group of people on wwe television not a lot well and i don't know According to Marina Shavir, I don't know if she knows her. Wait, why do you say that? Because of the, the promo that you still haven't seen. That's one of the most epic things in all of AEW television. Oh, okay. When when was it from? I shall watch it. Say that. It's posted in the Discord. It should be there every day. It should be right, the, so this those is the, pinned messages. This is a call to action. To uh, Oh, I'll, I'll to, put it up there. No problem. You just got to yeah. remind me. All right. I, I don't want to do you. it during the show, but it's, uh, it's yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's probably a low stakes thing. I, I've heard Lucha Vavum is fun. I didn't know that it was still going. Um, I've never been. It sounds, it sounds like it's more fun for a not st- standard wrestling fan. Like it sounds right. like a fun, like it's a novelty there's show. live music. Yeah, exactly. And it's then some show. wrestling in there where you'd be like, Oh, that's fun. But if you, like and watch wrestling normally you might be like, all right, this is weird, but right. good for Brian Kendrick, huh? Yeah. And, uh, Taya, they're all, they're doing good work. Um, speaking of, uh, going to fun shows, you went to a wrestling show. I did went to a wrestling show. What wrestling program did you go witness? I witnessed new Japan pro wrestling strong, Fighting Spirit Unleashed in Las Vegas, Nevada. 
Oh, how was that? I went with Rosecca and uh, we went, we drove out that morning of the, of the show. So that was last Saturday. And uh, we just went out for the show. Like we spent an hour in an arcade. Saw the majority of the show. We left it for the last match because it was, I was like, if you're not into it, then I'm not into it. I don't give a shit. All I want to see was Eddie Kingston. Right. Everything else was either. I didn't know the people or I didn't really have many stakes in it. Let me see. I, I saved the card here. Cause I didn't know if we're going to discuss it on the show. Yeah. I, I figured I saw that you had, had gone and it's, it's so uncommon. Yeah. It was, it was just a, we... it was a great way to spend the day and get out and do something different. So we had bailed for Tamatanga and Shingo Takagi. It was, it said it was going to be 60 minute time limit. And it's like, all right, oh, well, right. We also thought by the time we get back, it's by the time we got back, it was two 30 in the morning. And then I had to drive back from his place in LA. So that was, I got Ooh. home at like three 30. So right. it was, it was great that we left when we did. Um, so seeing stuff like I'm trying to see what some highlights were. Eddie Kingston versus Hanari was great. I Hanari was a cool guy to see for the first time. So that Eddie a, Kingston was that a title is match? The, yeah, the 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 New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong right. Championship is their Strong is basically the American division right. of Right, it's like the American TV mm, or faux TV title sort of. Yeah. The American World Championship. I right. think they also yes. have like a TV title equivalent, right. but okay. Eddie's the guy. So that was fun seeing him and you heard him say motherfucker. So I was all into that. There's I came a, to hear Eddie Kingston say motherfucker. That was your sign that you made. Yeah. Uh, there's a tag team called Monster Sauce. That is a great name. And it's Alex Zane, who was pretty good. And Lance Archer, who needs a tag team at this point. Yeah. And they were great together. They fucking owned the room. They took control. Like it was, it so was really cool. Why not be doing that on AEW television then? Because Alex great, Zane doesn't currently work there. I know, but make make him work there. Monster Sauce is a fantastic name. It's a fantastic name, and that they is, they own it. That's great. I love um, everything about that. I got to see uh, Julia live, who we saw in um, the uh, the Moneyball match, that Moneyball oh, ladder match. Right. Oh God, that match. If you have, if listen, if you're not a patron uh, to the point where you can watch Watch Along Wednesdays. There is one match that you really need to get on. Yeah. It might be the greatest match I've ever witnessed <laughs> in all of sports entertainment. So I got to see her live and I was like, oh, okay, there she is. It wasn't, I mean, she's pretty, she's got presence, and I assume what her and Mercedes Monet will probably be the thing because they seem right. very similar. Got it. Um, there's a crazy match of a wrestler by the name of Atlantis, who's been wrestling a long time. He's it's his 40th anniversary match in the USA. It was how it was built. Okay. And and it was, I, I had a, a minor sense of this, but this was a lot of people I was unfamiliar with. And Warzaka had said like, this is, this match is crazy. This is people from all over that don't have anything to do with right. one another. Really clash and, of worlds. It's wild. So on one side, it was Atlantis. Atlantis Jr., who I said, oh, is that his kid? And he says, not always in luchador stuff. Like sometimes it's an apprentice. Right, of course. Yeah. So um, Atlantis Jr., uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi. Right. And Mystico. Oh, interesting. Do you know who Mystico is? Yeah, that's uh, Sankara. OG. Yeah. Interesting. He was not, he was not impressive. What did he say? He was not present? He was not impressive. I don't oh, know if he was present oh, either. You said he was not present. He really phoned it in. He was not present. He, you know what? He was not yes anding any of it. It was very, very, very just not. I listening. can't say that he was because everybody else like had a moment and did stuff. And I kept waiting for Mystico and I go, I don't get it. I don't know what's going on. Versus Adrian Quest, Tiger Mass. Oh, that Sobrano was all one Jr. side. Oh, I thought yeah, that, that was, was one side. Oh, I thought that was the two versus two. Uh uh-uh. Oh, shit. Then. It's versus Adrian Quest, Tiger Mask, Soberano Jr., and Rocky Romero. Okay, so a big eight-man tag, Survivor Series, more games. Yeah. <laughs> and that was the first 
match of the night that kind of clicked for me because we saw they, they have the new japan pro wrestling dojo stuff that happens at the at the top of the show right so those are like the the up someday up and comers right. they're but, not even there yet yeah that's what would be like your dark matches at like a tv taping kind of thing yeah but yeah. Pro, it's i'm trying to say this in the nicest way possible like sure they oh i remember i was i, I was those people <laughs> Yeah. And they just, they did their routine. Right. There was no sense of, Hey, we're in front of a crowd. Now we, we need to make it seem like we're competing right. for something. We're fighting each other. Oh, it's just, yeah, we, we work this out and we're doing it. They went through the and motions. Some was people it? were so over enthusiastic and I'm like, do you fucking know them? Cause otherwise maybe you need to be a little critical. Right, but maybe they did because that is a strong possibility that they were like everybody they know went to that. Yeah, because there's one guy's like, "Come on, man, you got a Mac, go oh, Mac, you got this, Mac." Yeah, every single thing he did, like, "Yeah, Mac, come on, go on." This is the fucking first thing in a four-hour show, <laughs> and that guy burned himself out. Huge. Right. He was dead. That idiot fan. So that was fine. So then he shut up more. But uh, yeah, the. There, there was some of the fun highlights. It was just fun to go see a show and see New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong because I feel like for for people like me that don't watch New Japan on a regular basis, this is just the it's the gateway in right. to see the occasional guy to see Naito again and to see um, Sonata and guys that are big deals in New Japan Pro Wrestling. But you get to see him every so often. You go like. Right. Oh, I gotta, I gotta watch Wrestle Kingdom, or I gotta watch another thing to see them do something cool, a little, like a little sample platter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. Uh, well, that's awesome. Damn. I'm glad you got to go do that, and I'm glad that you got to see Eddie Kingston say "motherfucker." Because listen, this sounds like a great day. Uh, speaking of great days, I figured since it just happened, uh, a, a little bit of news out of uh, out of your favorite event of the year, Crown Jewel at Saudi Arabia, uh, mm. Solo Sokoa. Beat John Cena clean at Crown Jewel. No gimmick, no nothing. Just, just a bunch of spikes. That's it. Just Samoa spike after Samoa spike after Samoa spike pin. But that's the thumb. That's the very thumb that John Cena was going to shove up his ass. Yeah, he did it. There was not a single time that it go up his butt. Or did it, and then that's... It wasn't really a clean win because it was a dirty or, butt juiced covered thumb win. Or the obvious is that he did it, but we can't see it because we can't see him. <sighs> That's true. Uh, this one you're going to love. Logan Paul wins his very first title. He wins the WWE United States Championship from Rey Mysterio with underhanded tactics. Using brass knuckles like a jerk. Brass knuckles from a boxer. Yeah. Hmm. I, I will say this. I, I I noted this in the chat, and I believe it, I believe it might have been Mike Lucas uh, who pointed out. I apologize if I'm mistaken here, but the knuckles came in. Okay, he grabbed them, but he was draped over the ropes. He took a six one nine, and then went in the ring, and then when Ray went up for the springboard, then he punched him. But you still took a 619, though, and just no-sold it. Yeah, don't take a 619. Block that shit. But uh, but he d he took it, and then it was explained to me, well, in the video game, the 619 is just the signature move, and it's the splash that's the finisher. Oh, uh, or the <laughs> so, they used to be the West Coast pop yes, as well, right. but I think you yeah. raise a little. He's a little. He's like, uh, they don't pop so much no more. He's once a year. He's starting to get like a little dad belly on him. I noticed it's cute. I like it. Good for Logan Paul getting a dad belly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Logan Paul is the current WWE United States champion. I don't know if that means he's going to be on TV a bunch uh, in the next couple months or if it's just like, yep, with that title, just not on TV as long as he can't show up. He has to be because Gunther can't show up. Well, no, Gunther can show up. He just can't wrestle out of the U.S. Gunther will be there. He'll be there as long as they're home. Um, well, is LA Knight a champ? No, he is not. LA Knight, uh, not a champion. Uh, I did not. I did not what see. Them. I did not see the match. Um, 
but I saw the uh, the ending, like the the uh, I saw the aftermath of it. Um, in uh, this, I thought this was just interesting, uh, and of course, these numbers are just taken from websites who I have no idea whether or not they're credible. So we'll just talk about this with asterisks next to everything. Sami Zayn did compete um, against Judgment Day associate J.D. McDonough during the kickoff show today. And according to SEScoops.com, it was Zayn's 900th match since joining WWE. 900th? 900th. Nine, 900th. Ninth hundredth. Dummy. You said 9th? I did say 9th. 100th. I, I said 9th hundredth. What the fuck number is that, Tamina? 9th hundredth. It's a 9. He wrestled 9 matches and then 100 like that one. So it's not, oh, okay, so it's his ninth hundredth <laughs> match, just like that. Ninth hundredth match. Yeah. His first his first match. I almost said first. Oh my god, I'm speaking with a list because of this bit we're doing. Uh his first match uh was in March of 2003, uh, under his real name, Rami Sebe Sebe, I don't know how you pronounce it, with Cassius Ono against uh Rowan and Harper. Really? That's his first match? His first match in, in so it, in almost ten years, just over ten years, nine hundred matches. That's crazy to be to have a first match with a bunch of people. It's like, yeah, I know who they are, and they all had and he successful careers, and they got a win too. Sammy and Cassius won. They beat Rowan and Harper that day. Wow. Um. So this had me curious because I was like, oh wow, that's a lot of matches, and so I started just to do a very minimal sleuth thing, and I just thought this was. Interesting, because you and I love stats. Uh, at the time of his release, Dolph Ziggler was the active wrestler with the most matches for the company at around 1,700 matches. Now, is that televised matches or is that matches with the company? Matches with the company. Because I think also he has some crazy record with he has the most televised matches, does he not? Probably. I, I, would ass- I mean, I'm going to assume that if you have that number, you got to have the other one, right? I mean, 1,700. That's, it's got to be up there. Like, that's how many times Flair wrestled Steamboat. Uh, <laughs> that was two summers. In one year. Two, yeah, exactly. According to like the Hall of Fame thing yeah. or whatever it was. Um, we wrestled over 17,000 times in May. I mean, that's a lot of wrestling. But once he got released, once Ziggler got released, Kofi became the active wrestler with the most <gasps> matches in the company at around 1,600. And Orton and Miz are following behind nipping at his toes. Wow, there. okay. Yeah, there, there, there's that period of time where the the mid 2000s that those people just fucking wrestled yeah. all the time. I think, with the exception of Orton, Orton just must have re- wrestled a, a shit ton, but he wasn't doing like main event. No, and right. Exactly. The lower end shows that those other guys would get thrown on. And he started a little bit earlier. So he was around a little bit sooner. So he has a little bit of time on them. But yeah. Um, I, I definitely feel like that's just, that's, that's incredible. But I don't know. I, I thought it's incredible to think that Sammy's, I, I don't know. I know that it's strange because again, 2013 is when he was with the company. It's been a decade, but I still feel like people like Sammy and KO, I still feel like they're kind of new toys in certain ways. Like, I don't know what, why that is, but it still feels like, yeah, they're still like, is it because they, they're not the absolute main event? Like, championship people that it still feels like they have a lot ahead of them well you're a wwe fanboy so you wouldn't think of them anywhere else of course not i think i think Sami Zayn feels newer only because of the Sami Zayn-ness of it okay thinking of when i when i look at him i go like oh yeah that dude's wrestled forever but when i think just specifically of Sami Zayn, i go well that's a that is a WWE, wwe career because yep. he was el yep. generico yep. and you know, that, that is a, it's its own, you can see the documented path from beginning to end. Right. Of, uh, well, this dude never talk. What's he doing? What's he going to do? Fucking ska music? Really? All right. <laughs> that name's stupid though. All right. I'm into the name now. Like, and he talks and he gets funny and then he gets paranoid and grows his hair out. And then just the evolution of the guy. Yeah. So. He's had a lot of change. In recent years. Yeah. Previous to that, he was he was Sammy the same for quite a while, right? But I think we've we, since we've seen so much newness from him, that newness is a bit there. Kevin's done the same shit forever, right? He's even even though like 
whether or not you were cheering him or not, he's always the exact same guy for the most part. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyways, I thought that was interesting. Uh, the last that little, is interesting. Uh, last little piece of news uh, for the day before we get to our uh, our PWP championship match is our, uh, our AEW's CEO Tony Khan announced a multi year deal with Hall of Famer Nature Boy Ric Flair, who surprised fans in attendance and viewers at home during last Wednesday's AEW Dynamite in Philadelphia, marking his historic return to TBS by appearing as Khan's special gift for Sting. His special gift. Now, wait, how can he sign a gift? That's Sting's gift. Yeah. You can't sign away a gift that you gave someone. I mean, that's bullshit. It kind of is because if you if you're like, hey, hey, kids, you wanted a cat and I got you this cat. Right. Yeah, you got the you got it to the cat, but you still have to pay that cat. You still have to like buy it food. You still have to take care of it. So like Tony Khan is just going to take care of pay the cat. Yeah. In theory, in, in figuratively, like you're still like buying the food for the cat. You're still buying the litter. You're still cleaning up after you're still. You know, you're you're so essentially Tony Khan is just like taking care of Flair for Sting so he can just kind of hang out with Sting. He's like his pet. Yeah, but that cat was flashing its pussy to a stewardess on a flight, and that's problematic. Listen, AEW is a very progressive company where they don't have problematic people in it. So I don't know how that can even be true, Scott Narver. How dare it's you? It's true, because Hogan's banned forever. But Flair was eminently coming to AEW and then the Dark Side of the Ring episode came out and they went, well, we'll just wait a while. And apparently they found the right window. Yep, Sting. Sting was the right window. Sting's leaving? Well, come on. Let's get Dick Swing in here. Yeah, it's it's fine. It's fine, everybody. So who who can be the person then that will will allow Hogan to go through the AEW doors? Because everyone would go, oh, well, that's fine because... Hogan's tied to him and it's it's okay. Fuck. Titus O'Neil. It's gotta be the only guy, right? His best friend best in the friend. world. His best friend in the world, Titus O'Neil. Well, Titus has got to leave WWE God, first. It's sad that everybody that I can think of is either not not a big enough deal or dead. Yeah. Who's not a big enough deal? Uh, who, who comes to mind uh, when you think that? Uh, Bubba Ray or, or Bully Ray, maybe. Oh, his son in law. His son in law, yeah. Yeah. Whole, but like Yeah, I don't know. Everybody's gone because he killed them all. Uh, allegedly. No, now you're going to lose out on all our Gawker money. <laughs> Wait, we get Gawker money? Yeah, we have we have monthly Gawker money showing up. Because I, we will allow Hogan to step through our doors at any moment. Right. He's never accepted, but we'll allow it. Um, Yeah, sure, why not? I mean, he's doing all these other uh, comedians podcasts now, like he was on Theo Vaughn's. And do you think he's gonna do? Uh, do you think he's gonna uh, be on Taker's Patreon? Uh, probably not. Just guessing. Let me tell you, I want fifty percent of the proceeds, brother. Yeah, I bet you have to explain. I bet you Hogan doesn't know what Patreon is because if he did, he'd be on it. Oh, he's going to see takers and be like, what's this he's doing? But he thinks he'll have to like have a whole dead theme to it. Oh, he's going to go goth. Yeah. So he'll get, he'll get like a Stanley bearer to oh. manage him and it'll be Jimmy Hart. And Jimmy's like, you don't get it. It's a pun. It's like, what? Stanley bearer doesn't mean anything. Already stole superstar Billy Graham's gimmick, brother. <laughs> now guys steal. Everybody marks. did. Um, well, here's my favorite part about stole his hairline too. <laughs> oh, wait, did no. Cause that would imply that he has the hairline. He didn't steal it. It's just, they, it's gone. It lost it. Stolen. Stolen. Um, my favorite part about the Ric Flair announcement was that it also mentioned Flair's woo energy drink. And that apparently, um, you know, uh, people like Sean Ross of Fightful uh, were rep- uh, told by sources that his deal with AW, quote, was very similar to that of Randy Savage's to WCW in the mid 1990s, where part of getting flair was also getting a deal with the energy drink that would cover a significant portion, if not all, of flair's salary. 
So essentially, we're going to see Woo Energy drinks all over w, uh, our AEW television. It's going to be on the announce desks. It's going to be on the step and repeat. It's going to be in locker rooms. They're going to sell it at all the concession stands, at all the events. It's going to be little logos in the corner of Flair's T-shirts that say Ric Flair. And then in the bottom, it's going to say, brought to you by Woo Energy Drink. It's going to be everywhere. That's weird. Yep. Why? How is Flair's price point that much these days? To be, a, you know, an ambassador. I mean, right? maybe, a, it, maybe it isn't, but getting the money from the, like getting the energy drink money is easier. And it's just like, yeah, fine. We'll do it. I don't know. I'm not sure. Do you drink energy drinks? Nope. I, 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 I've never liked the, when I, I mean, we're talking like 2005, six, maybe yeah, somewhere in that range, 2005. I think Monster was started becoming popular in the cycling community, and I used to not be, Monster Sauce. No, not Monster Sauce. I wish uh, I would have. I would have put some Monster Sauce in my mouth in a minute. Um, but the Monster Energy drinks became really popular in the cycling community, and every time I would even try one, I would just be fucking ill. Uh, yeah, the only things that I I used to do is when I used to do the long drives back and forth, um, from like Pensacola to Tampa, or if I was doing like stand up gigs, one nighters, and I was driving because I didn't want to spend money on a hotel. I would do those five hour energy drinks, but I haven't done one of those. Yeah, probably haven't done one of those in maybe God, twelve years, maybe fifteen years, something like that. What do you sip it? Um, yeah, you just kind of it's, it's like a little baby thing. And you just kind of sip it, and you know, over the course of like or you chug it. No, I wouldn't chug it, but I would have it quickly, but I wouldn't chug it. I wouldn't do it like a shot. I would do it like, you know, a few sips until it was gone. Because I don't, I don't drink energy drinks. Uh, they, they've never appealed to me. They all, the, all the cans look disturbing. Right, yeah. Uh, in some way. Or I don't, I don't hear about, oh, they taste good. No. Like, I know what a soda is, and I know that it tastes good, but energy drink seems too generically odd. Right. And I know now... Rock has an energy drink. Logan Paul has an energy drink. This is me now learning that Ric Flair has an energy drink. Oh, you did? <laughs> I'm worried that we have to do a taste test of all this shit. Oh shit! I like this. Let's do. Let's do only wrestler energy drinks and see who has the best one. Are there more? Does the chat? Do they know? Is there's? Uh, I don't think. So. Uh, I mean, is there is there more than three wrestler energy drinks? I'm going to guess there could be, right? I'm going to guess no, but, but there very well could be other people who have them. Does, uh, does, uh, Jericho's bubbly count? I, I think it de- deprives you of energy. I don't know if it gives you, uh, well, there you have it. What do you, what do you think of, uh, of Ric Flair in AW as far as like, what is he going to do? Is he going to make anything better? Is he going to suck attention away from my concern is that he's, he actually sucks attention away from sting. That he's going to take away from Sting's final that, chapter. That has certainly already happened. I saw. I saw oh. the segment of when he he was gifted, yeah. and uh, it was seeing Sting talk and doing stuff. Like I'm into that. Yeah. I, I want to see Sting and and hear him go out and uh, say what he has to say. And then when Flair came out, he's going, "I'm all hey." Uh, I want to be there for the whole ride. I want to be there to the very end. When is it? March? And it's not. It's in February. Right. But he, say, presenting it in the way that he did on television, like, I don't know. When is this thing? Right. Didn't come across well. No. And I do like good train wreck wrestling television. I don't want it at Sting's expense. I was going to say, yeah, it's okay. But you have to know when it's, you know, when we want it. Like, there's some things that we want you to take seriously. Yeah, yeah, and he's in the ring with him, and he hugs Shivani, and he hugs Sting, and Darby's in the corner, and he doesn't look at Darby, and there's no acknowledgement of Darby <laughs> on television. And it's like, in fairness, this doesn't work either. In fairness, Flair is so old, and he did so much drugs, drank so much alcohol. He thinks that Darby is just a, like a figment of his imagination. <laughs> he's like, That's does fine. anybody else Go see this half skeleton over here? of imagination? Yeah. You got to You got to interact with everybody. You got to It can be the thing when he was in ROH and right. Austin Aries comes in the ring. He's a champion. He's going, you are one of the greats. You're going to be the best. You are. This crowd knows it that when they see you and everyone else in the locker room, they go that you are going to be number one. You are the standout. It's like he doesn't know his fucking nope, name. Not at all. 
He he doesn't know any part of his name. He doesn't retain hey, any of it. Hey, buddy. But he's selling it well enough. Hey, pal. Yeah. So that, but it's got to be, you got to be on board and making everybody. It's Punk did it when he was with people and he's, he's making the scenes and the making it important for whoever he's on television with that. Right. This is an important thing. And these are the last people we're running out of them to make the next generation of stars. We keep relying on the older people right. and keep cycling back to them. Flair putting a stamp on people is necessary right. and him putting his stamp on sting doesn't isn't doesn't necessary. Do no, we can have moments where he's endorsing him and right. he's saying something and we, and we see them in the ring and they've got footage of Flair and AEW fucking make him put him in the game already. Right. Like make action figures. All that stuff's great for AEW fans to celebrate a legendary wrestler in the company that they like. That's fucking great. I mean, if anything, but yeah, bring him in unrelated. And then at some point in the next three months during Sting's final run here, just have the two of them cross paths naturally, organically, in a way that is like, hey, that's that nod of like respect. And then it's then it's over and they can go back to separate ways and Flair can be around and Sting could wrestle his last match without worrying about it. Like, do you think Flair is going to be involved in his last match? Yes. Oh. Now I do. Yeah. Like the second that he came out there, I go, oh yeah, this is happening. <laughs> now, could I also be on board with Flair leading the Dark Order? Possibly. I do like that. Possibly. I do like that a lot. I mean, Flair leading any of the factions they have would be great. <laughs> except who else? Except uh, Christian uh, and uh, the, the Jurassic Express kids. Luchasaurus and Nick yeah, Wayne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's no good. Yeah, yeah. We don't no, need no, that. No, no, no. But yeah, put him with that faction doesn't even have a name. Put him so with no, no uh, Have him take over the uh is is a uh, Blackpool fisticuffs still a yeah. thing. Yeah, have him take over that. That's great. Have him take over House of Black. So anything that involves black. Yes, only things that involve black. Yes, of course. Again, just yeah. so that we can keep Hogan as far away as possible. <laughs> um, all right, kids. Uh well. Uh, that'll do it for uh, for the program this week, but not before we dip into the jar. It is time to crown. This is hold on. This is this is unprecedented. What's that? Because right, is this the first time the jar we've seen the jar on the East Coast? Am I mistaken? Yes, you are. All right. <laughs> Very well. Hold it in for editing. <laughs> um, it is. Uh, I couldn't remember if we had seen it because yeah. I know I did the 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 little lunchbox here. That would have been we... for. Uh... Oh wait, no, wait, maybe you're right. Now, hang on. No, because I did because we did October. You would have done September, or I'm sorry, you would have oh, okay. you would have done not not September. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, yeah, you would have done September. We did October together, and now we're doing November together. As long as I jumble your brain, all you this, really it's all worth you it. made me second guess myself to the point where I had to resort to looking at a calendar to remember the order of months. This is where I'm at as a person. Okay, you guys, when I say that I'm ill all the time, this is where I'm at. Daddy needs a break. Okay, yeah, because this has happened the ninth hundredth time. Yes. This has been the ninth hundredth time that I've been confused about something today. Hey kids, it's that time. <laughs> PWP Championship <laughs> Battle Royal. Um, if you don't know what the hell this is, well, thanks for tuning in for the first time ever. Uh, each and every month, the first episode of the month, we put all of the championship palskis into this jar, and uh, the Battle Royal winner is picked. That person gets an item of their choosing from the shop, We'll talk in a little With new swag available. Yeah, we're gonna talk in, by the we'll by. We'll talk in a minute about some of that new stuff and about how uh, a certain item is going to play into this. Um, so you get that footy pajamas. You get uh, the footy pajamas, of course. Everybody gets six pairs of footy pajamas, six hundredth pair of footy pajamas. Uh, you get uh, an item from a shop. Uh, you also get to pick a watch along for Scott and I um, to watch along to um, for that patron series. And if you're in the Discord, which you should be. You get your name in lights, as well as the name at the top of each and every stream for the length of your reign, much like current PWP champ AJ0314, a.k.a. Binary. 
Um, def- you streamed all over this episode. Defending champ. Um, it is uh, is about that time. Without further ado, Scott, you want to get into it? No more ado. No more ado. The ado is a done. There it is. Do a little. And this is this is also unprecedented. This is the ninth hundredth time we've picked a champion on the show. Is that true? I don't I don't think that's right in our stats. Alrighty, there it is. And new PWP champ for November. Alice Raider, aka Invasion, aka Evasion. Alice Raider, congrats on your victory. Keep an eye on your email to see how you get the goods. And congrats on yet another rain. Let's see. I always like to pull it up immediately these days because we have like a, we have a history now. You know, like it's we've been doing this so freaking long that we have a history. Let's see. Uh, the last time Alice, oh, August wasn't that long ago, reclaiming her title from just from August of this year. All right. Alice Raider. Uh, there you have it. So uh, keep an eye on your email. Uh, let's talk a little bit about this because I'm going to do this once in a big spiel now, and then we're not going to do it every time because it's it's too much. You just know that this is how it works. Is uh, There is some fantastic new items in the shop. Um, items <laughs> including phone cases for Samsung Galaxies as well as iPhones. Those oh. included in what you can get when you win your PWP championship. That is... Uh, Shut the front so door. So those phone cases are joining T-shirts, hats, and mugs, all items that you can get with that PWP championship. Now, there is another item that has recently been added into the shop, the brand new hoodies. Footy pajamas. No. You, you say it right when I say the actual thing, <laughs> and yeah. it really makes me concerned that people don't fucking hear it. And I don't edit this, okay? I don't have that fucking kind of energy. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Hoodies, not footies, but hoodies. <gasps> hoodies are in the shop. Now, I'm just going to be honest and we're going to talk about it now. We can't offer the hoodies as the prize because the price point is just too great. So the way that you'll this break works, us. so the way that yes, you'll break us. So the way that this works is to keep it fair. If you do decide you'd like a hoodie as your uh, uh your championship winnings, you'll essentially get the amount of the most expensive other item you could get towards a hoodie so essentially you're getting 30 that makes sense it's a great so essentially deal. if you if you want a shirt great it's yours if you want a hat great it's yours if you want a mug great it's yours phone case great it's yours if you want a hoodie cool here's 30 dollar coupon there you go great so you get 30 bucks off which is roughly the cost of all of those other items um actually a little bit more than that so you actually are still making a lot more and considering that you know it's ten dollars uh, more back than what your patronage is to be a championship, Palski. We hope that uh, you still appreciate that because uh, we want to do everything we can to give back to you because we really appreciate you being patrons of this silly little wrestling program that we do. Um, but of course, adding... And we want you to survive the winter. So if you want a hoodie and uh, they can't break us because then we'll be out dead in the cold. Yes, absolutely. So there you have it. Uh, I know it's weird, but that's just how this has to work. Um, we didn't think about that when we started this fun contest. I think ago. that makes sense to people that if, if it's, uh, when we start making pro wrestling Powski cars, <laughs> you know, sorry, champions, we can't just give you a car. We'll give you $30 off of a car. In fairness, I, okay? I did get you that one car once, but Kofi Kingston threw paint all over it and then slipped and it was just a whole fucking ordeal. But I liked it better with the paint. It, it, it was a lovely color of orange, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Um, there you have it. So th- that's that's how that works. Um, once again, we really appreciate you guys all for being patrons. Um, I love the the championship. It's one of my favorite things that we do. I love that we have this lineage now that dates back to June of 2021. We've been doing this now for almost two and a half. Well, more. Yeah, two and a half years of champions. Uh, I love getting people's watch alongs and hearing yeah. why they chose this match or what it means to them. And then us getting to watch it. That's one of my favorite things about it. Um, yeah, this is, uh, this is such a fun thing we do and I hope you guys appreciate it. And again, I, I didn't just want to not include hoodies as an option because I thought, well, people might still want one. And so that's, that's, that's the workaround. Yeah. Just so you know, in the future, when we talk about this, we're still going to say the winner gets an item of their choosing from the shop, even though there's an asterisk next to it. Well, there you have it. Uh, Scott Narver, speaking of patrons, uh, we need to thank our current Patreon Palskis. You got it. So thank you to everyone who helps support the show. And this is the only show where you can get 
a retribution name and a maximum male model name. So thank you to Alex Pierce, AKA figs, AKA the toys, Alice Raider, AKA invasion, AKA evasion, AKA the current P W P champ for November. Andrew Beeler, AKA pollen hate, AKA at you detest Curtis Mason, AKA Hurtis. Gilbert Short, a.k.a. Goliathon, a.k.a. Battle Under Ruse. Mass Lama, a.k.a. Spitz, a.k.a. Jacara Lover. Michael Beltran, a.k.a. Limestone, a.k.a. La Natural. Miguel Diaz, a.k.a. Bipod, a.k.a. Too Much Husk. Suicide, a.k.a. A.k.a. Tim Bemis, a.k.a. War Trek, a.k.a. Tussle Quest. Tim Redbeard, a.k.a. Blood Fuzz, a.k.a. Blue De Fuse. Tom Hader, a.k.a. Cupid, and Tony Griggs, a.k.a. Big Griggs, a.k.a. Grand Grisois. Thanks to each and every one of you for your continued support of the show. Uh, and, of course, yes, check out the new shop. Uh, fun, A lot of fun new stuff in there. There's some new designs. Um, there is, like I said, phone cases uh, with some great new designs. We've got a, a, a definitely not a Macho Man design that's in there now that I really like. Some good stuff. Check it all out. Uh, you can uh, find that and links to the Patreon at pwpalskis.com. You can find us on social media at uh, pwpalskis. I'm at Jake Wood Bacon. He's at Scott Narver. We hope you guys enjoy your... Uh, can I throw a little call to action here? Yeah, sure. They, go ahead. If they made it this far? I'll do an action. So uh, I'll try I'll try to remember this in the future weeks as well, but I just want to get this started now that, yeah. you know, the holidays are coming up and we're going to be having, uh, you know, Thanksgiving coming up here in a couple of weeks and the other holidays. But I thought maybe because we like to do the, the hotline... Um, we did a hotline episode previously where it's like all hotline calls, maybe around Thanksgiving, we could do an all hotline episode where you, the listener call up and say what you're thankful for, whether it's something in wrestling or companies matches. Maybe you're thankful for a Ric Flair coming to AEW and here are the reasons why, but call the uh, pro wrestling Pasky hotline, seven, four, seven, six, 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 five, six, zero six with what you're thankful for this year and maybe we can make a whole episode about it. I absolutely love that idea and I hope people take action from your call to it. Uh, there you go. Thanks everybody. We hope you had fun joining us. It's always a blast hanging out with you, the Pro Wrestling Powski. You guys, I they're just so handsome. Mark Allen Heiliger and Chad Philip Peter, hosts of The Hell With This. You know, if you yes. keep up with those kind of compliments, it's going to start to sound facetious. Tell me a little bit about The Hell With This. It's about that movie that you love that your best friend has never seen, despite you telling him to watch it about a million times. Chad and I have a lot of those between us. Yeah, so we're basically saying, you know what, the hell with this, it's time to finally sit on the couch and watch those movies. Sometimes this movie I love that Chad hasn't seen, sometimes it's the other way around. And sometimes even a guest will bring a movie along. So you guys are diving into movies. It's a fantastic way for people to explore and discover movies that they might not even know about. How do people check it out? You can listen to us at thehellwiththis.com or wherever podcasts are found. Dragon Wagon.